Imagine you pick up your first property or your 10th property and all of a sudden you get that dreaded phone call where there's a catastrophic event such as a fire, a flood, or some unforeseen circumstance that happens in your property and you happen to have a high deductible. Now, do you actually have to come up with those funds yourself? We're gonna be talking specifically about debunking insurance myths in this episode. Hey folks, my name is Jesse Vasquez. I am a midterm rental operator and investor in the Central California area. And if you'd like to follow my journey, you can head over to Instagram at the real Jesse Vasquez. In this video, we will cover several myths in the insurance industry space that can save you thousands of dollars. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to Bigger Pockets so you can be the first to be aware of any news and information or learning space in this exact environment. But before we get started, why is it so hard to protect your properties? Traditional insurance companies make it painful to get a policy. With long lead times, lengthy paper forms, landlords deserve better. With Steadily.com, you can get next day affordable landlord insurance in just a few clicks. From single family homes to short term rentals and beyond, Steadily.com gets you the best coverage for your specific property. Save serious time and money on your rental property insurance. Visit Steadily.com to get a commitment free quote today. This topic is extremely important to me because as I started investing in 2015, I had no idea about insurance for homes. In a lot of ways, it's different and it can be confusing to a lot of different people, especially if you do not have a correct company or a rep that is going to explain a lot of this information for you. So I personally had a claim in 2022. Here in California, we had crazy weather. If you guys have ever seen the movie Forrest Gump, if you remember where he talks about rain coming in sideways and actually rain coming up from the ground upwards, that's exactly what we had in California. I picked up a property subject to, and little did I know this home had a flat roof. And what ended up happening is there was so much rain, the rain did not drain. It sat on the top of the roof for weeks. And all of a sudden, one day, the ceilings just collapsed and it dropped rain into the living room, into the family room, and the garage actually collapsed about two weeks later. This ended up being over a $35,000 claim that I had to put with the insurance agency. So I'm actually here today to talk to you about deductibles because that scared the living out of me. As you're a new investor or a seasoned investor, insurance claims can be very difficult to understand. And one thing in particular is a deductible. And this is something that I learned the hard way. And I hope that many of you don't fall down the same path that I did especially when you want to have a lower premium. And sometimes having a lower premium means having a higher deductible. Let me actually break this down for you. If you have a high deductible, and I'll give you an example of my property, I had a $10,000 deductible. Don't ask me why I did that, but I ended up having a $10,000 deductible. The claim that I had on the property was a $35,000 claim. And for me, the reason why I chose a $10,000 deductible is because I wanted to have a lower premium. I wanted to have a lower payment amount. And there's a trade-off here. And this is one of the things that I really want you guys to be aware of. As you're talking to a rep, please Please make sure to find a rep that is going to give you information as far as what those deductibles are actually going to do for your premiums. I think that a lot of new investors and even seasoned investors aren't particularly sure. They just want to get the cheapest rate or have a decent deductible that isn't going to cost too much. But this is why I bring caution. So let's break into this. Is having a higher deductible actually better for you than having a lower deductible? I'm going to give you my thoughts on this. If you have a higher deductible, you're going to have a lower premium. But at the end of the day, and I'm going to give you my situation, I had that $35,000 claim that was put into place. Here's where the myth is debunked. I actually thought I had to put $10,000 down in order for them to start work on the property. And here's what I learned. And here's what I want everybody to understand. So instead of actually coming up with the $10,000 yourself, the insurance company will actually withhold the deductible from the actual payout. But that only left me with a $25,000 check that I ended up having to go find somebody that was able to do the work, a licensed contractor for that $25,000. And keep in mind, this was already bid at 35 k and I had to go find somebody that was going to be able to do that for that price range of $25,000, which I had a very difficult time finding somebody that was going to cover $25,000 to get this place cleaned up and get it back together. She rocked it fell. There ended up being some mold in the garage. So it was not a good situation to be in. But again, for me not knowing, I thought I had to pay that $10,000 dollars up front. This is why it's extremely important to make sure that you have conversations with your insurance carrier, especially somebody like Steadily, where they're very familiar with these certain circumstances, and they'll give you a lot more information up front. Had I known that if I had a lower deductible and my premiums would go up a little bit, I would actually make sure that I had something that was not $10,000. We can't predict when something can potentially happen with our properties, but knowing that the insurance companies will actually pay that deductible for you gives you a little bit of peace of mind knowing that if you do have a situation like this happens, they're actually going to pay that for you, but then 
then give you a lesser amount for your actual claim. Right now, we know the interest rates are higher, which is also why I opted to have a higher deductible. Now, that brings my premium on a monthly basis with my principal interest, my mortgage at a lower price point. But again, at the end of the day, if you end up falling into a situation like I did, where there was a catastrophic event due to rain, Mother Nature decided to show up in full force and knock the walls down in my house or the ceilings down in the house, that put me in a very bad situation. But again, not knowing that this company was going to pay out of pocket made give me peace of mind knowing afterwards. But then again, at the end of the day, I want to caution everybody with this. Pick a deductible amount that you know that you're going to be able to handle for whatever unforeseen circumstances to happen, that you know you have that amount of money in the bank all the time to be able to cover a certain situation like that. As I mentioned before, I have short-term and mid-term rental properties and traditional long-term properties. I actually recently had somebody that stole a bunch of stuff from my short-term rental property, and I did have short-term rental coverage insurance. One of the things that I thought is that once we had short-term rental coverage insurance, that we were going to be covered for everything that was stolen out of the house. And in fact, I had about $10,000 of stuff that was stolen from my property. I had the worst guests you can ever think of in my property and I was very heartbroken. And here's why I was heartbroken. As I called my insurance company, I mentioned everything that we had, but here's where I messed up. I actually didn't have additional insured coverage for the items in the home. I only had dwelling coverage, which is the exact property itself, not the items that are actually in it. So I want everybody to be cautioned about this. If you have insurance for a short-term or medium-term rental, please make sure that you actually add additional coverage for the items in the home. And keep in mind that these insurance rates are gonna be adjusting depending on how much stuff you have in the property, how much it's worth. Again, that is outside the actual dwelling coverage of the property itself. This was a huge lesson that I learned, obviously by not having the items in the home covered, and that was, again, by not talking to a company that understood where I was coming from, other things that could have potentially helped me, and how I could have got around these issues. And again, adding these additional coverages aren't necessarily super expensive. As I talked to a rep from Steadily, they actually mentioned to me that short-term rental insurance and long-term traditional insurance, there's not a big difference in price when I actually thought there was. In fact, he said that the difference could be 75 cents on the dollar. So a premium can only go from 200 to $600 per year just depending on the specific property. And here's what I learned. The coverage on the dwelling is actually the most important part. And here's where the kicker is. If you have a property that's near a fire area, a flood area, a hurricane area, that's where your premiums go up. It's not necessarily based off of the short-term rental guests that are coming in and out. It's actually based on any inclement weather that that area may have. Or again, if you're in a seasonality where there is fires for something just like that in the specific area or market or city or state, that's when your insurance levels are going to go up. And I did not realize that. And that is actually something that we are debunking today. So again, there are many people that say that insurance doesn't necessarily matter, or if it does matter, you don't necessarily need to buy the additional packages that come along with it. And I'm here to tell you that if you do buy additional packages, although you might not think that they're going to cover you at a certain point, I can promise to you that they will. And sometimes adding these extra packages aren't specifically super expensive, but they will help you in the long run, especially if you're going to be short-term or medium-term renting, please make sure to talk to somebody at steadily.com as they are one of the trusted sources that I personally work with and that I think you should too. I just want to thank you all for watching this Bigger Pockets video with me, Jesse Vasquez. And for those of you who aren't aware, I was actually on episode 728, so definitely go check it out. And I also want to thank our friends at steadily.com for actually giving us the opportunity to work with them in this specific space and for you to connect with them because again, they are a wonderful insurance company that I happen to switch to myself. So for that, I appreciate you guys for being here. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and be the first to learn about new releases from Bigger Pockets. I'm excited to be here today and I hope that you are too. We will see you in the next one.